Yeah, did you ever hear the story about how they uh, how they met? Like uh, Gene, um, Lavelle. Gene Lavelle and Bruce Lee. I yeah, yeah. It probably had something to do with uh, stunt work in Hollywood, but I don't know. Exactly, stunt work in Hollywood, and then at one point, uh, Gene Lavelle grabbed Bruce and picked him up in the air, <laughs> started walking around with him. I forgot what was the exact reason, but you know, they were like you know, they, on a movie set, you know, Gene Lavelle was a stunt guy, and Bruce was probably, I don't know. They, they probably had an exchange. And then anyways, Gene LaBelle supposedly, I think Joe Rogan talked about this on one of his podcasts, but yeah. picked them up, grabbed them, picked them up like this and started walking around. And I think Bruce said something like, let me go, let me go or I'll kill you. And then Gene LaBelle <laughs> said like, I can't because you're going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's when, when Bruce realized like, holy crap, this guy is strong. Like he, oh, he yeah. could snap me in half with his bill and his prime, man. That dude was that dude was jacked. I mean, he yeah. he did he did things like that as as a professional wrestler. He wasn't just a judoka, but he was also a professional wrestler as well. And he did stunts like that in the ring where he would you know lift people up and carry them. And uh, man, Gene LaBelle, I don't think he gets enough credit. Like people always talk about Bruce Lee as being the father of MMA because Dana White popularized that expression. But Gene LaBelle actually did MMA fights before MMA was a thing. Like when he fought, um, um, what's his name? Savage, the uh, boxer. Um, like it on his first, Milo Savage, the boxer. And that, that had goofy rules. Like Gene LaBelle insisted that Milo Savage wear uh, a gi top. Mm-hmm. And um, which I, I think is kind of silly if, you, if, if you're going to, if you're gonna fight, just just fight. Let the boxer, let the boxer box. Let the judo guy do judo. But um, so they had kind of a screwy rule set where you know Milo Savage had to wear a gi top, and um, Milo also wore like uh, fingerless bag gloves, which was kind of strange. But ultimately, uh, Gene LaBelle threw him on the floor and choked him out. You know what you would expect a master grappler to do against a guy who doesn't know how to grapple, but. Mm-hmm. You know, for those who watched it at the time, they were kind of shocked. Like, what? Impossible. Boxing is a more popular sport than judo. Um, and therefore, it must be more effective. That's how we tend to think. It's more popular, so it must be more effective. The mere expo- exposure effect is very powerful. Mm. But, you know, all the mystique about Bruce Lee is fascinating, but it reminds me of something else I was thinking about the other day. I've been getting a lot of comments about Frank Dukes on my channel recently. You know, Frank Dukes, the, the guy That's- who... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The story that turned into blood sport. And, you know, he's he has some truly outlandish claims. And um, there there are some Frank Dukes fans that, that come after me because I've made a few videos where, you know, I kind of poke fun of uh, him, at him a little bit because, you know, you, you, you simply cannot have a 62 round single elimination tournament, for example, without like 73 trillion human beings. But um, in my heart of hearts, nobody, nobody wants the Kumite to be real more than me. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. If, if Frank Dukes were to come out and prove us all wrong and produce like proof that his Kumite actually happened, in my heart, I would be like, yes. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I remain skeptical. So there, there's something about like those those childhood heroes, you know, those those larger than life illusions that we have as children about Marsha that um, you know we we secretly hope is true. But what you brought up about Bruce Lee, the fact that he was just a man, I think that that in many ways is more inspiring. And I'll tell you why. Because that means it's real. That means what he did is achievable. That means, you know, if Bruce Lee is strong and fast, you can be strong and fast too because you're a man too, right? If Bruce Lee did great things in cinema, you know what? That's achievable too. If Bruce Lee did great things in terms of, you know, his philosophy, awesome. Because that means you can do that too, right? Anyone who is truly inspiring is someone who shows you the way, who shows you this is something that is possible. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Like, 
that's the problem when you put somebody in a pedal on a pedestal, right? It means that they're so special that that means that you're not, and yeah. that, that means that what they did would be impossible for you to do, which is okay. Well, what's the point of that? But um, and even Bruce Lee, he said it right in one of his interviews where he said he doesn't want to be seen as a star because that's an illusion. Yeah. He wants to be seen as a great actor. And I think Bruce Lee himself, he would have wanted to inspire people in a way where make people believe that they could do what he does if they actually put in the work, mm. you know, and, and, and so on and so on. He wouldn't have wanted people to see him as a, as a god or anything like that. And, yeah, um, yeah and, and to, to get back to, like, the whole Kumite thing, like, I love that movie. And, and you know, like, if, if, if that was a real thing, yeah, I'd, you know, but, of course, it's, it's not. 